this installment of Rushed Vibes. As you see, I am alone. For those of you who are familiar, uh, this is not really a two-person show, but today, at least for these few minutes, I'm riding solo. My name's David Rushing, one half of the team here at Rush Vibes. My wife, Jessica, is not feeling well, so I told her to go ahead, lay down, take a load off. I can handle it. So you guys are stuck with me uh, for this episode, at least for the for the first little bit. Um, we had an amazing conversation with our neighbor and good friend, Bethany, on Sunday. I'm recording this portion um, on Tuesday um, and for our latest installment of Mompreneur March. It's the last interview we're doing. And um, it was it was fantastic. Like Bethany has uh, been in our lives for a few years now. Her and Jessica have more more of their relationship. But obviously, she and I, we uh, we communicate here and there, especially on, on social media. And it was just so awesome to kind of get to know her. Uh, a little bit more and, and hear her story and just her thought process and, and the approach she and her husband uh, take to raising their seven kids. Yes, you heard me correctly. They have seven children. So uh, that was a very interesting uh, and exciting part of her story to to hear and learn. So uh, I can't wait for you guys to hear it. Excuse me. So I uh, just want to read a little bio about Bethany, Bethany Wilkinson, our, our neighbor, who was um, our last guest from Entrepreneur March. So Bethany's passions are helping individuals connect with their own passions and purpose and having the physical and emotional health to live those passions out to the fullest. She is currently raising her seven children, acti- actively involved in their out of the box education, quote unquote, and enjoys homesteading as a hobby. She serves the community as a home birth midwife. She is a business owner herself and helps her husband and sons run their businesses as well. So as you can hear, there is a lot in there, a lot to unpack. And uh, we probably could have talked to Bethany for hours on end. We, we cut it <laughs> at about an hour for the sake of everyone's attention span. Um, but, you know, there's there's a lot to her story. So really, really excited for you guys to hear it uh, and, and to meet Bethany as well. Before we get to that, uh, if you've been with us for a little bit and you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Um, obviously, it helps the channel, helps us grow, helps us get in front of other people organically when it comes to search. Hit the like button as well. I know you haven't watched the interview yet, but just go ahead and trust me. It's going to be bomb. It's going to be dope. So go ahead and trust me. Hit the like button. Uh, connect with us on social media as well. We're on Instagram and Facebook. You should be seeing the, the little graphics doing what they do down here below. And you can visit us at www.rushvibes.com. Keep an eye out. I think we're gonna I think we're gonna do some merch. If not, if for nothing else, just so I don't have to wear hoodies every single every single episode, and I can uh, have some Rush Vibes uh, 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 merch on on or logos or something on my on my chest instead of just random hoodies from from Walmart. Um, and you can support the channel if you'd like. We're on Cash App, so dollar sign R U S H D V I B E S. So. Just wanted to get that out of the way before we got to the interview. And um, like I said, we recorded this on Sunday and Jessica is there. So you don't have to worry. It's not just me and Bethany. It's it's Jessica. So hopefully we didn't lose any any subscribers or listeners when they saw when you saw that Jessica wasn't here. Um, she was definitely there and, and very, very engaged during the interview is, is all I'm going to say. So i um, going to cut to that and then I'll, I'll be back to finish up. Hello. And we are here with our very very special guest, Mrs. Bethany Wilkinson. And she is last but absolutely not least of our special moms during our entrepreneur mom mom bleh, mompreneur march mom it's feature. A mouthful. That was a mouthful. Uh, so we are so glad and honored to be in your presence. And we thank <laughs> you for taking the time out of your busy yet not so busy appearing life um, to just let us know a little bit more about you and just allow us to introduce you to our audience. So thank you for that. Uh, before we dive into interrogating you, um, I just wanted to give everybody just a little background into how I was blessed to get to get into your life. Um, I had recently been laid off from my job. This was in 2017, and Solace was maybe two at the time. That sounds about right. So I was just trying to be more of an active mom. You know, I figured, when am I going to get this time again to just dedicate to my child. So I happened to, I think someone either told me or I Googled that there was a park near our house. So I said one day, I was like, you know what, let me take her to the park and we'll, we'll go on swings and slide around. And when I arrived at the park, you were there 
uh, there was a big, there were two big vans in the parking lot <laughs> and a lot of kids. So I thought, I really thought that it was like maybe a field trip or just, you know, some, I don't know, midday excursion mm. that, you know, a school was doing. So, you know, I got over and Solace, fa- of course, found the smallest kid she could and just gravitated right to her and was playing and jumping around. And then I believe you just kind of walked up to me and we just we just sparked this conversation. And through that conversation, I learned that we live close to each other. I also learned that you were homeschooling um, mm-hmm. your children and I also learned that half of the children that were there were yours. <laughs> um, so I was I was blown away because mm-hmm. I was just like, wow. And just you were educating me and there was, I believe there was another young woman who was there. So there might've been three moms Mm -hmm. and you were telling her about like the homeschooling process. And it really piqued my interest because I had always been scared of the idea of homeschooling. I thought, you know, it'd be great to pour into my kid, but I was like, that's not something I could ever do. And, you know, through our conversation, you just made it sound so attainable and easy. So as David, I came home and I was like, I think I could do it. I I could probably do it. And then I started researching and I was like, you know, this is not my ministry, but, um, but I do appreciate that. I've met someone who is making it seem so attainable and Mm -hmm. that if push came to shove, it is something I could do. So me blabbing that that's in short how, um, I was blessed to come into your life. And I'm so glad because after that day, I've actually never been back to that park. So I guess it's, <laughs> it was just destined for me to go there and meet you. It was you. divine. <laughs> What's meant to be is meant to be. Aww, and here we are almost right. four years later, three, four years later. Yeah. And I mean, you've helped with the sec- the second child that we brought into the world. Mm. So, you know, it's just been such, like, I don't think you realize how impactful you are in just such subtle ways, but you are. So I, I could speak your praises forever, That's but you so know, sweet. I just want to give you a chance to tell us a little bit about yourself and then we'll just, you know, kind of go into the questions that I feel that people would appreciate knowing about you. So okay. what about the questions I feel people would want to know? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I forgot. No, don't, I mean, I know, about I'm, I'm, when Bethany's I know around, I'm, I kind of just completely forget about my, <laughs> I know I'm tucked away <laughs> in the corner over here, but I'm still, all you right, know. Car- but you know what? By all means, you lead this. I bet you don't have a single question. So, um, tell us a little bit about, (laughs) no, go ahead. And as Jessica said, tell us a little bit about yourself. Oh man. You know, that question is so broad. It's so broad. And I had someone ask me that the other night at dinner and I immediately started rattling off all things about my children. Mm -hmm. And when I left that meeting, I thought, you know, that I really didn't say anything about myself. Isn't that what we do? Yep. So... It was a hard question. It is a difficult question. Then it's a hard question now. Like, you know, but, but having just went through this, I was like, you know, if I could go back and answer that question, I would talk more about myself and less about the ages of my kids. Well, here's your chance. Here's your opportunity. But kids are like the, the ultimate like icebreaker, aren't they? When people say, you know, that's one thing that most parents can like, obviously can, can relate to because if. You have kids around the same age. If your kids have done something stupid, like jumping off furniture or jumping off a roof, jumping off a deck like I did, thinking my brother was going to catch me. And Spoiler <laughs> alert, he didn't. Um, you can like, it's just, it's just an easy way for right. adults as parents to it's kind of. you say. Well, and, and to back it up real quick. Thanks for having me. You're I feel honored welcome. to have been asked. Yes. <laughs> so yes, but, uh, I, I keep talking over the guests. I'm sorry. But um, when we first announced our podcast, mm-hmm. I believe you were, because Bethany always comments for people who don't know, anytime Jessica and I put something out that's on Facebook that's relatively quality, Bethany usually is one of the first people yes. to comment. So she's I'm always loving. I'm, she a a I'm a fan. She's always liking fan. pictures and loving <laughs> pictures of our kids and, and encouraging us. Um, and we can get into that a little bit later. But um, I think when we announced that we were doing our podcast, um, I messaged Bethany and was like, "Yo, we definitely want to have you on." And I don't know yeah. if you t- I don't know if you took me seriously or not, but um, I kind of did. She, I thought, well, maybe they, might, they might change their mind as time goes no. on. And that's okay. You know, I was thinking that's okay if they do. No, nope. we could never. <laughs> no, you were literally like one of the first people Aww. who who popped to mind, at least for me. And then we talked about it, and she was already thinking of it, so it was it was meant to be. But I'm sorry. Go ahead, continue. So we can no. start with where you're from, if you need like an easy. That's okay. okay. I so I'm from Virginia. Grew up in Waynesboro, Virginia. Is that near your place? I don't think so. I'm from Woodbridge. Okay, so Northern Virginia. Northern Virginia, yep. All right. So grew up in Virginia, met my husband at Liberty University, 
And then we moved to Charlotte. Been here ever since. So. What was it like um, growing up? Is it because I don't know quite where you said Wayne's Waynesboro, Boro? Shenandoah Valley. Oh, small okay. Small town. All right. Small town. One high school. Oh. You know. So what was life like as a, as a small town small town kid? What was it like for you? You know, I there's a lot that I appreciate about small town living. There's a lot I appreciate about Charlotte. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, I mean, goodness, even in my own family, I guess we just know what we know, right? Like, I don't know, I don't know what's opposite of right of the life that I've lived. But your your life kinda is kind of hybrid yeah, right now, kind of yeah, little because, city, little country. Because even though, so we live about. Three minutes apart, if that. Um, yeah. We we're in maybe a mile, if yeah. That. We're about fifteen minutes from downtown, but right. you know we've got horses up the street. Yes. We've had pigs run loose in Always our neighborhood on before. Our I have a pig. Um, you have yes. you have chickens, so it's right. like you still you still have a taste of that country life, but you're, yes. you still have that Charlotte. I like address. to be close to a Target. <laughs> yes, that's absolutely necessary. So, and growing up, we had to drive outside of our city to get to the mall. So that's something I appreciate about. Oh, I could Or imagine. to the movies. Yeah. You so, guys didn't even have a movie theater? No, oh, we wow. did not. Walmart didn't come to town until, not that I love Walmart, but didn't Still. come to our town until I left <laughs> oh, that wow. area. So, but yeah, small town living. Everyone knew each other. You know, my dad was a pastor. So Preachers kind of lived that life. Right. Yes. That was one of the things. Yep, that's another, another commonality we share. So right. one thing that, everyone should know is that you are blessed to be the mother of seven children right seven seven children yes it's always uh, you have a child for each day of the week <laughs> that's that's amazing and yeah, it is a lot it, it is a lot and i think what i appreciate from it is there might be some preconceived notion as to what mm-hmm. a mother of seven one should look like sure um which you don't uh there's for me, I would expect you to constantly look tired and exhausted, okay. um, which you don't. I, I have been there, though. I, so. I would Wait. expect, but you, <laughs> you, you, from, and this is, again, I, I understand that the world we live in, you know, social media is essentially what you put out there. Sure. But you have always come off as one of those person, pe- persons, people who <laughs> you're, persons. you're putting out <laughs> as much of your authentic self mm-hmm. as you can. Mm-hmm. So when I see you being active, like for me personally, when I found out we were having Savi, I said, crap, we have two kids. I'm going to misplace one of them. I was convinced, mm-hmm. like, I'm just not built. <laughs> but oh. I would reference you, and I'd say, you know, Bethany is successfully I caring for seven that. children <laughs> and having a marriage and being active in so sure. many different ways. So mm-hmm. how would you, what's your motivation? How do you do it? And I know that's such a vague question, how do you do it? But mm-hmm. how have you not lost your mind? Do you ever have moments where you're sure. like, I have seven kids, and I'm just like, Whoa! Right. <laughs> I, I, I guess I, I it, it I have a lot of questions in my head about it, but I'm not you. So yeah. for you, you've gotten used to it. But for someone else who maybe aspires to have seven kids, mm. uh, how did you, how did you get seven kids? I mean, we know, but how? <laughs> right. So well, they came one at a time. You know, they come one at a time every other year. But then now it's like, wow, this happened really fast, and now we have a really big family. Our youngest is five, so we're kind of moving out of that season of life, and hindsight is always twenty twenty, right? So, um, you know, looking back, it's, uh, I'm like, I probably wasn't doing as well as I thought, I, you know, Mm -hmm. I I thought I was handling it, Um, didn't ever really think, you know, like, I'm a rock star, I wasn't ever, I didn't have, have that mindset, but it was possible. I loved children, loved being pregnant, loved the nursing and couldn't wait for the next one, loved birth, you know? So we kind of just took one at a time. I probably was ready for the next one even before my husband, after two. It was mostly, I was ready. Bobby could have had two or three and been been done, you know? And I appreciate that about him. Sometimes people do think, okay, large families... Where is this pressure coming from? What What's happening? Why is this happening? <laughs> All the questions. Yes. Um, but looking back, I think, you know, I I know there were some co- people that were probably concerned for my health and well-being. Mm-hmm. 
and they should have been, you know, like I wasn't going to listen to them at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, but looking back, I'm like, you know, I, I probably wasn't, I didn't have my finger on the pulse of my own health and well being, and kind of the family, I was just doing what I really wanted to do. And I, I think I probably could have taken better care of my, not that I would put any back, mm-hmm. spread it out. Um, but I'm thankful that I started to question and think about some things a little differently as time went on, Yeah, taking care of myself better, creating boundaries, um, you know, making space for the things that I love. So, um, there's a quote that says something about, um, it's not, it's not that you're so exhausted. It's that your soul is tired. Your soul is weary. And so, you know, for moms, we can get into that habitual mom life, Mm -hmm. right? And, um, not take the best care of ourselves. So I can't say that I've always handled it all well. Mm -hmm. I've learned in time that taking care of myself well does actually equate to taking care of my family well. I like that. I just didn't always have that. Mm -hmm. And it does, (laughs) it does take a while to figure that out. I mean, I think that's something I'm still struggling with. Sure. Um, And I'm, you know, I'm just two in. So, and it's just a woman's default to want to try and fix and handle everything. Yes. So I guess now I'm curious, you, you always seem, you always seem to be into something. Mm -hmm. Now, if I'm not mistaken, you do have a, a background in education, correct? No. You do not? Why no. did I think you had a degree in education? Mm-mm. Somebody didn't do their homework. Sir, I, I have. <laughs> My homework is following her Instagram stories and her no, Facebook posts. it's okay. Posts. No, it's okay. I actually am a college dropout. I did so, know that. Yeah, just straight up left. Yeah, because you, 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 you and Bobby were just like, we're, we're in this. I was ready to get married and, and have a family. And did I you was both, out of there. Did you both drop out? No. He w- so he was a junior when we met. Okay. I was a freshman. Okay. We got married after my sophomore year and I was out of there. Oh, we wow. moved to Charlotte basically okay. right after that. I had zero. I don't even know what my grades were that last semester still to this you, day. Not, not a concern. Straight how up. Did that go over, and walked away. How did that go over <laughs> with your parents? They didn't ask. I think they oh, were really? so thankful for me to have brought home a guy that they really loved. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They were like, that's cool. Be done. I didn't say anything, but I think they were just happy. They were just like, okay, this guy's better than what she's brought home in the past. (laughs) I did see that, that post. Um, (laughs) and I had, I gained a lot of respect for your dad. You had made a post and, Mm. um, essentially talking about how he, you were going to make a rash, a a rash decision. And he didn't come with the typical dad. Like you can't do this. I'm Mm -hmm. locking you in your room. He, he was very supportive. Right. Um, and didn't chastise you in that forced you to not make a decision that would have sure. shifted your life in a completely sure. different direction. And I did have some family members that were, you know, okay, what's your backup plan if, mm-hmm. but I was not hearing any of that at that time. I mean, 19, we got married when I was 19, first baby at 20. And I just had it all, I had it all planned out. You know, there was no, there was no need for a backup plan, but it all worked out. Mm-hmm. I ended up pursuing passions as life went on, you know, obtained a certification in midwifery, um, and then have homeschooled the children, taught at a co-op, so it's not, it did not necessitate a degree, but how hard is it to teach kindergarten, really? (laughs) I mean, after being a teaching assistant myself Uh, during virtual learning, I I, I feel qualified. I don't want to do it, but I I feel qualified if it was necessary. So you just mentioned your passion. So one thing, if anyone follows you on social media, we know about Plexus. Um, Okay. I didn't know about Plexus before you. Right. Um, And through you, I've learned a lot. I've used some of the products. How did you get into that? And, and okay. how has it driven you? Because you are, you are top notch up so there. So as you, as you do that, tell us in the viewing audience, sure. a little bit about what Plexus is sure. and then dive into Jessica's question. Sure. Okay. Well, all right. I'll try to. Sorry. Cause <laughs> okay. I, I, I don't yeah. know if any, if talk everybody about watching. Plexus and then yeah. Talk about what it is, it. how you got into it. Well, and Plexus then, yeah. is a health and wellness company. It is set up direct sales. So, Mm -hmm. so most people are familiar with something like Arbonne or Pampered Chef or something like that. Plexus is health and wellness, uh, supplements. So, 
um, focusing on root health issues, um, gut health, balancing blood sugars, reducing inflammation in the body. But at first glance, most people would just think, okay, it's another whatever. It's another MLM. MLM. It's another set of products. Thought the same thing myself. Same thing. Never. So speaking of college, when I was looking through, okay, you know, which box do I check? Which, which path am I going to take? Business would have been the last thing. I never saw myself as a business person. Um, because in my mind, I thought business suit, you know, Mm -hmm. pantsuits and the whole professional thing, which I am not very professional. You say that, but you (laughs) play that on TV (laughs) and social media. I don't like heels. I'd never wanted to work in a building or a high rise. And that's cool if people want to do that. Mm -hmm. I just never saw myself as that. I'm the barefoot chicken lady with all the kids, but I also like to make money and need to do that for myself and my children. And for a long time, I didn't, I didn't think I did. And anyway, I can get into that in a minute. Um, how I got into Plexus, like we were talking about earlier, just the self-care thing. Mm-hmm. So had my seventh baby, didn't really recognize the decline in my health over the past probably three babies. So hit a wall in my health um, after Liberty was born and started just really not to recognize myself. I was responding to the kids with kind of a blank stare. Mm -hmm. And we were standing at the counter in the kitchen. And I I remember this moment, but standing at the counter in the kitchen and one of my kids coming to me with so much excitement in their voice to show me something. And I could not fake a smile. It would not, I I couldn't make it happen. And I knew they needed to see it. Mm -hmm. And I could not make it happen. And I thought, something has to give because my kids need to see yeah. me smile. That's, that's a bad spot to that be in, but it's, it is very common. It's mm-hmm. very common. And, um, so not just for, for my kids, but for myself and then knowing through midwifery, knowing all of the women that were probably in the same boat and nobody was really talking about it. Mm-hmm. Um, So I did two things. I reached out to my integrative doctor and asked her, what medications can I take while breastfeeding? It was a conversation I didn't want to start, didn't want to have. But again, here we are, right? And then also was seeing a client who I had, I was her doula with her sixth baby. It's like all all these people with all these babies, right? (laughs) So, um... I was her doula with her sixth baby, so I attended her birth as just a an emotional labor mm-hmm. support person. Um, between her sixth and seventh, finished up my certification that I had been working on to become a midwife. So she moved back to the Charlotte area, wanted to hire me as her midwife with her seventh baby. Well, between her sixth and seventh, and she, I've told this story multiple times, and she's okay with me sharing it. But between her sixth and seventh baby, there was a radical change in her health emotionally. And I saw that 180 and I didn't understand it because we have worked so closely with women, offered them options, offered them vitamins and nutritional supplements and things. I had never quite seen anything like that. And so started to pay attention to the things she was talking about. And she was talking about plexus. But I did not want to admit that anything that amazing could come from Mm -hmm. some network marketing thing. And my husband had the same ideals. He he was like, so who, I mean, he literally said this. So who is, who are we making rich by, you know, because there's the whole Mm -hmm, tier thing and the whatever. So whose, whose mortgage are we paying when we purchase this ever. And and at the time we did not have anything in the budget, in the line items for Plexus, you know, a package of products that was a hundred bucks. That was, we did not have it. So of course he was like, you buying this every month or, you know, (laughs) every other month, which one time, (laughs) right. But I, but once I started using the products and I, and I did it in secret for a little bit because as a midwife and someone in the community that talked a lot about health 
and you know, in other ways, other natural products and mm-hmm. things like that. But I'm, I'm over here falling apart. I can't give you much advice. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but I knew people would take me seriously mm-hmm. and I did not want to put, put myself out there behind a product that I didn't really understand mm-hmm. or know enough about. I just knew it worked for her. I was like, I got to try it. Love the products. Um, started talking about them and really the rest is history. I just decided this is a, this is a good thing. It's a good way. It's a residual income type of thing. It's something I can see myself doing well with figuring it out. I'll figure it out, Mm -hmm. figure out how to pay for my own real quick so that I don't have to hear, you know, (laughs) it didn't take him long to, to be on my, on my side with that. Then he was bringing my products to me each morning. Like, this is working for you. Keep I'm going to mix it up for you and give you the things you need. Like, first thing in the morning, this is this is a good thing for you. It, it brought me back. I mean, it, it sounds crazy. Mm-hmm. I know it sounds crazy, but it was a timely blessing in my life. And I could talk about it. Um, and then, again, you know, financially, it was like, I don't want to continue to be in a place where we have to... I, I mean, I used my birthday money from my parents to buy my first little package. And I was like, I don't, and we, we were at the time having to ask, you know, so-and-so needs this dental procedure, but like, we don't get, you know, can we just pay you back when the taxes come in? Or um, we got to wait until the first of the month to go to the grocery store. I mean, that's just where we were. And I was like, you know, here's this opportunity with products that I love and have really helped me, why don't I just, you know, like I'm tired of living like that. Mm -hmm. This is an, this is an opportunity. I can, you know, set the pride down for a split, you know, a little second here and, and maybe run with this. And so I did, and I ran with it and, um, built a team, team, the word team. I don't like it. I didn't consider myself a leader. Mm -hmm. Um, other people saw me as a leader, but I did not see myself as a leader. It's still, I'm like business and, uh, but it has been, it met a need both health wise, physically, emotionally kind of was a catalyst into meal planning. Mm -hmm. I didn't even want to go to the grocery store. Like it was overwhelming. And then, you know, go working out or having any energy to be physically active, um, getting back into the community more. I mean, at that point when I was lowest of the low, we had canceled life group at our house. I had, I know this is, I had sold some of my goats. (laughs) Like what? (laughs) Not the goats. What's the goats thing? (laughs) Um, Sold some of the goats, you know, stopped taking clients. So I was kind of just withering away and then doing less of what I loved Mm -hmm. even took me lower, right? Because then you're not, your soul is not really being fed. And, um, You know, so it couldn't have gotten much worse, but it came at a time that it met that physical, emotional need and, uh, and then the financial piece. So I'm a big fan of it now. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, and not just Plexus, but like, you know, giving women an option that they can do with a busy lifestyle that can help meet needs in their home. Um, but first and foremost, it really is about like, just seeing people regain their health and doing whatever they're passionate about. So, yeah, that's Plexus. <laughs> oh, can, do I get to? Yeah, you are. I get, you okay. had a posture like you were ready. No, I'm just over here in the corner. I'm just trying to, you know, just make sure you guys know I'm, I'm here. You just, <laughs> you just, you just, you just taking the, you, you just, just take the steering wheel, and you just. I told you I could take over and interview driving. you guys. I have questions <laughs> no, burning as I'm. You know talking. what's what's interesting is um, when we and it, well, I'll finish this, and then we'll we'll take our first break. When we're doing just me and Jessica for an episode, she'll be like, "Oh, you know, what do you want to talk about?" And you know, she's real, you know, kind of letting me lead and things, but. Every guest we've had this month, Jessica has just been dominating every conversation, and I'm over here like. Sorry. <laughs> but it's cool. I love it because I love to see her engaged. Um, and obviously you two have a connection. Yeah. So um, 
I think it's important to be able to read the room, so to speak, and just mm-hmm. kind of let let it go. But um, I just want you to remember, I'm, I'm over <laughs> I here. Know. I was kind of so, making eye contact with I Jessica. See. I that's, know. Well, that's, I that's fine. <laughs> that's fine. But it's, I think it's in, as a as a a woman. Yes. I guess as a mom. No. I, I and fortunately, all of the women. I love surrounding myself with older women. Mm. Not that you're old by any oh, means, but I'm women that are older okay. than me I'm because <laughs> I love I love absorbing your experience, your sure. knowledge, you've been through it. And I'm obviously going to make my own mistakes, but mm. I appreciate learning from what you've already experienced. So yeah. I think that's why I'm, I'm like all of the women we've had have had contributed mm. in different ways and their mm. lives have gone in different directions, but there's just so much to pull. So it's like... All right, Sensei. What else? <laughs> what else? <laughs> but I yeah. know you're here. No, it, okay. I just want to make sure. <laughs> I, I, I see you. I need to get like a little flare gun. I, I, pop I it see. up every once in a while. All right. So we'll take our first break, and then we'll come back uh, more Great. with Bethany, and we right. will be right back. All right. So we're back with Miss Bethany. Um, oh, David, have you been here the whole time? <laughs> I, no. Where did you come <laughs> from? <laughs> no. <laughs> yes, um, I've I've been here. I'm just trying to. <laughs> trying to you know find your spot I, I know my place so i'm just trying to stay here and wait until spoken to um you just wrapped up talking about plexus why uh sure. why it's important to you and kind of walking us through when you introduced to it and and why you decided to jump in with with both feet so um i have one question and then once you answer i'd like to follow up with another question if that's okay jessica yes, is that all right okay I'll, cool i'll do my best not so to have um you talked about when you first decided to do it mm-hmm. how your husband Bobby was a little right. skeptical yes. as most people are right. with, um, direct sales. Mm-hmm. Um, how vital once he bought in, mm-hmm. right. How vital was his support to your success in Plexus? Do you think And if he had kind of always been on the fence, do you think you'd be as successful in it as you are now, or would it have kind of taken a different route? So I'm a little bit of a brat. Uh, <laughs> I was determined When I knew the products worked for me and I knew that this could potentially be something that I could do to um, change things for our family financially, I was just going to do it. Okay. So I just told him, you know, I mean, I know that's not the the typical way, but I, this is what I'm doing and I'm going to rock it. Mm -hmm. You know, that was just my, my attitude. I was just going to do it. And... I know that part of me was like, he will, he will be on board and his support has been, has definitely been appreciated and helpful. And he does travel plans and he takes care of all of the tax stuff and Mm -hmm. lots of behind the scenes things. When I travel, um, we usually go together and that has been a huge blessing for our family, but Sometimes I go and I do things and he's not with me and he takes care of the kids, which, you know, it sounds like a lot, maybe a couple times a year. Mm -hmm. Um, So in ways I'm like, no, I probably couldn't do it without him. So Mm -hmm. I really appreciate his support. But I also was like, even if I don't have it, I'm going to figure out how, because this is meeting a, a real need we had. So... Well, awesome. Was there a second question? Or you didn't ask it yet? I haven't asked it okay, yet. Okay, okay. Um, just didn't want to open it was folded in the first so I okay. could jump in. No. <laughs> okay, okay. No, I, I intentionally separated them. <laughs> um, now, I remember vaguely, and you'll have to help me out here, but I remember you sharing, I don't want to say it was, it was at least a couple of months ago, a picture of your old house. And then oh. there was a story attached to it um, in terms of, I think, I don't remember the entire post, but I think you were kind of just talking about where you've been and then how you got to where you are now. Mm. Um can you talk a little bit about what what it was like going from those kind of, I guess, for lack of a better phrase, humble beginnings to kind sure. of where you guys are comfortable now? Wow. Um, and then after you get there, so yeah. I guess three questions. <laughs> uh, I sense that with Plexus, because it, it's the kind of business that you can literally run from anywhere. Right. Um, you and I don't know what Bobby does professionally, but I'm going right. to I'm going to be presumptuous here. Have a bit of time freedom. Sure. Uh, in terms of your, your lifestyle that allows you guys to take road trips, um, allows you to kind of do things off the cuff. Um, just talk a little bit about what that means for you guys as a family, because time is the one commodity Mm -hmm. that doesn't increase, right? Like you only have a certain amount of it. And whereas someone not to put nine to fives, you know, down, but as someone who works a traditional job, Mm -hmm. they don't have that. 
Sure. So when they make plans, it has to be within a two week PTO policy yes. or, you know, hope that they get a certain amount of weeks for maternity leave or paternity leave. Sure. So uh, just kind of talk about what that the time freedom has meant for your family. Okay. Um, so that's like three questions. I'm sorry. Do I threw that much. The yeah. The, 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 the house, okay. the house, okay. house Which, from. It's still so fresh because mm-hmm. this is just the last five years. Yeah. Cause I didn't realize when you said earlier that you started after Liberty was born. I yes. thought the way looking at it now, this seems like something you were like ground level now. plexus. And, and so, so now when the smallest things, I mean, pumping gas, Sometimes going through a drive through There were times my card was declined in the drive through you know, and it's embarrassing. Or I'd be at Target, have to take the cart back. Babe, the card just declined. Right? Which I know, we've always been comfortable. Our needs have always been met. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's, we've, we've always had food. And I know that that's not everyone's story. Um, but, you know, for instance, like with homeschooling, that was a choice knowing that the things that we would do extra, we would be responsible for sports, you know, private league, this or that. Yeah. And there was a time we could not do that. And even if we could have afforded to put one of our kids into football or whatever, to think about the gas it would take back and forth to practice four times a week, we had those conversations. So that was really up until Liberty was, I mean, well, yeah, five years. So five years ago, we were having these conversations often about what we can do and what we can't do. It's a whole lot more can't than can, right? (laughs) Um, So that was our life. And, but for the most part, we owned it. Mm -hmm. This was our choice. We didn't, you know, we just can't, haven't not been able to figure out why we keep having all these kids. It was like, (laughs) well, they have each other and like, you know, they can play backyard ball. Like we made all these (laughs) justifications for like... You know, everybody's wearing hand-me-downs and the whole thing and just trying to figure it out. Um, But, yeah, I mean, I – not a day goes by that I don't think about just where we are now and just thankful. It went from comfortable, like every 20 bucks, because that's kind of how you start out. Somebody, you know, buys from you as a customer, and you might make 15 or 20 bucks. And, I mean, we Mm -hmm. were thankful for every little 15 or 20 dollars. But how it works is, like – that person that just ordered may tell their friend, Mm -hmm. their friend tells their friend. And however that works, once you've told that first person, however that works, that that's bringing in extra here and there. So we went from comfortable to like not really having to make every decision based on money, you know? Um, And it kind of prepared us for a season we weren't expecting Um, my husband, I guess probably two to three years ago, um, walked away from a full-time position at a church. So he was full-time ministry and, um, Plexus, you know, it floated us for that time. We took a road trip. We got, we bought an RV, Mm -hmm. we gutted it. We went out West, spent six weeks on the road. Um, I still had that residual income coming in. And gas is not cheap. No, <laughs> especially not in an RV. So Definitely not. Oh, no, no, no. It's embarrassing, actually, to say how much gas that thing takes. But uh, anyway, so, and, and it allowed kind of some flexibility for him to then start his own business. He had done some contracting, remodeling work before, like 10 years prior, 10, 12 years prior. So... He's like, I'll, I'll go for that again. And our second oldest son is also interested mm-hmm. in building remodeling. So it, it kind of gave him space to build a business from scratch after that, you know, leaving that uh, church. So, so now he's, you know, built that up for a couple years. He's making great money now. Um, my, my focus has shifted somewhat because all seven of my kids are school age. Mm-hmm. So that is where a lot of my focus is, especially this school year. So I am not as plugged into my Plexus business, but that income is still residual. He's built a great business, helping my oldest with his business. And, you know, it, and it works. Because it's your oldest who's also in 
plexus, correct? He does, he does have, but again, he's focusing on some other things. That's not his main lane, mm-hmm. but he has built where he's, you know, got a, res- a residual income from that as well. And he's, you know, trying to build a gutter guard business, anything he can get his hands on that he can work into a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, he's helping another kid with a, a car detailing thing. And so just anything he can do to So to you're make really money. spreading that entrepreneurial yeah. spirit. Well, he had it. He actually started, he wanted, he's the reason we have chickens, actually. He asked if he could, if we could get chickens and he could sell eggs. I don't know how he got the idea, maybe a farmer's market or something, so that he could buy a a Nintendo Wii when they were cool, okay, (laughs) at five years old. So he's been an entrepreneurial mind, you know, since since he was little. I will say... He he used to work at our. Um, does he still work Chick-fil-A. there? Chick Fil A. He used to work at our local Chick Fil A. Yeah, a couple and years. One time oh, I did? went in there. Yeah, I went oh. there through the drive through. He happened to be working. I said, "Oh, I'll, I'll add a cookie to my order." And he was like, "Oh, just one cookie." <laughs> <laughs> Do and they he, get commission? He's a sales guy. I, no, they he don't. Is. But he, he the way he said just one cookie, and I was like. That's a valid oh, point. Oh, I see what you're saying. I said, okay. okay, I'll get two. And he was like, well, you know, we sell a six-pack. And you can just pop them in the microwave later, mm-hmm. and they'll be just as good. All right. So, I Bethany. Like, oh, so I ended up buying. You owe us $5 for your son <laughs> hustling, <laughs> hustling yeah. my wife. They did They did get, like, shout-outs at he, the, at the, in the back rooms for, you know, how many cookies they sold. Good. So, he, it he was strategic. Me, like, he really, it was almost like a f- philosophical thought, like, just one, like, what am I going to yeah. do with just one cookie? He he's, would come home he's talking like, about how many another cookies one. he sold. So, he, so. Uh, I ended up yeah. getting the, uh, the whole, the whole <laughs> six, the six pack. So back, back you to got, your question. You I just hustled. wanted to plug okay. that in there. You okay. got hustled. I did get hustled, but you ate some of those cookies. I remember bringing them home and you're oh, like, oh, I'm going to eat. No, Chick-fil-A cookies are, un, are undefeated. Um, but I did but get hustled. Just, but it was, it was, actually it was not a hustle. No, it wasn't a hustle. It he's was, just, he's just good. He's good at what he does. And I mean, if he could do that just with cookie, with, with Chick-fil-A cookies, I, I can right. only imagine what he can do with, yeah. he, the sky's the limit for him. Yes. And, and it, not just the entrepreneurial spirit, but also the time freedom piece. They have lived in a home where time freedom really is kind of top or that flexibility is one of the ways in which we have been able to juggle seven kids appointments you know the school piece um just being invested in their lives mm-hmm. and trying not to miss stuff that that's just been important to us and so we've tried to kind of keep our hands in things that we could have control over time wise and not have to do those two week vacation type things. Even though, I mean, we, we lived, you know, down here for like a, a long time trying to build up to that place. Like, okay, what, what can we do while also not sacrificing who we are and what we were meant to do? Um, which my husband loves, he loves ministry he will, he will always be a pastor. Like I will always be a midwife, but, but we also have to pay the bills Mm -hmm. and like our kids need braces and things like that. So it's a fine balance. (laughs) Are you back to me? Oh, awesome. I got to keep, I got to strike while the iron's hot. Um, (laughs) so what, talk about what role, uh, faith played in Mm -hmm. you guys, because I know you speak about when you were down here and then you kind of came into that yeah. um, that season um, where things started started happening. Mm. Um, now, I don't want to assume that it was easy for you being a pastor's kid and, mm. and Bobby, obviously, <laughs> um, um, being being a pastor and, and having that, you know, having his faith rock solid. Um, because all, everyone, just because you are spiritual and you're a Christian and you're devout doesn't mean that you don't get challenged by, by seasons. Right. Um, one of my favorite books is, um, uh, Oh, the places you'll go by Dr. Seuss. Yeah. Um, and I had my mom, uh, I told my mom what to get me when I graduated college. And I said, I, I wanted that book cause it was read to me in eighth grade mm-hmm. before I went to, to high school. And it talks about, um, how sometimes, you know, you're flying, you're soaring high heights and then sometimes you're, you're kind of down and I think it's, sure. Uh, and, and, a is it lurk or lurch? I think it's lurch, lurch. lurch. Um, so what role did faith play as you guys were kind of in the valleys, in the valleys before you kind of hit your, your ascension? Yeah. Well, and I'll say, you know, like the whole valleys thing, it still sounds very like first world because we, ha- we really have always had our needs met, mm-hmm. Sure. you know, but the difference between waiting and 
fine lining everything and just having more freedom has been amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean the faith piece. Wow. I feel like that could be an, an entirely whole, a whole <laughs> episode in and of itself. Just that path for us has always been up, down, sideways, every which thing just yeah. between churches and, um, you know, that whole road has, has really been something else. Uh, and we've had valleys in our faith, you know, mm-hmm. I mean, and it d- didn't always coincide directly with valleys sure. emotionally and spiritually, mm-hmm. you know, or financially. Um, but there has always been a theme, I think, of l- looking at circumstances for what they were and like none of those pieces would have come together without God I mean with you know he hears us and he cares for us and he's not dropping a Lamborghini in your driveway you know what I'm saying <laughs> like, <laughs> would, would be nice <laughs> I love what like Dave Ramsey talks about the um like God cares for the birds but he doesn't throw the worms in the nest mm-hmm. you know you gotta go after it a little bit sure. Um, but you know, just knowing, I think that that has carried us to an extent is just knowing that those, there are seasons that are dry. Cause even when financially things were good, like my husband wasn't serving in a pastoral role and his soul was pretty dry during that time. But knowing that God would open up an opportunity and just recently, like as of this past Sunday, he was voted into this little church right around the corner and so he's gonna have that space nice. to do what he congratulates what his soul cries out to do so you know exciting and terrifying all at the same time yeah, but <laughs> just adding yeah. another burden another to, layer burden but another, another layer, layer because on top of everything that you're sure. doing now you're going to take on the mantle oh. of being a pastor's wife yeah huge. and which you well, already carry but, but now I'm, i am really am a terrible pastor's wife we've been there done that but but at this age i can say that <laughs> and say this is who i am so let's just figure out those expectations Around because right and same with my husband and i and we talk about it like don't speak for me like if you're going to talk about things like you can talk about that from your perspective don't speak for me because we're different in mm-hmm. a lot of ways. Mm. So the pastor's wife thing, I think comes with a lot of expectations. Yes. And I, we talked about it a lot beforehand. And I said, as long as I can be true to myself and people know who I am and they, and I'm part of the conversation too. And he knows what's important to me. And he, and he also said, I won't do it without you. So I, I need to bring in what's important to you as well because we need to do this together. So, I mean, that's been phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Ten years ago, that wasn't happening. So, um, but yeah, but God provided, and that was, a, that was, again, just a way of him kind of weaving certain paths together and the timing. Um, we're still a little in shock about it. And yeah, like how do you fit one more thing, you know? But how you, do you, you will. It if it's will. part of who you are, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? It's not so much like what you do, how much time you spend doing it. It's like if it's who you are, it, it kind of naturally is it's like a flow it. of life. Can I ask one more? Yeah. Oh, I get one. Oh, the iron is still hot. All right. So <laughs> um, I uh, spend a lot of time on social media, mm-hmm. a whole lot. Uh, and it's so funny when Jacynthia, our first uh, Montpreneur March guest was here, um, I made a comment that she's always on I always see her post because she's oh, yeah. always posting. Yes. Like literally it feels like every time I open up either Facebook or Instagram, like just Cynthia's right. right there. Like, Hey, it's me. <laughs> um, and you're, you're very similar. I yeah. imagine some of it is like, okay, well, uh, be- not all the time, but I know you do do some plexus based posts, mm-hmm. so to speak. Um, but you're, you're very active mm-hmm. on social media. Mm-hmm. Um, and with that, I know you're no stranger to controversy, not uh, controversy, sure. but, uh, Character attacks, I guess, okay. would be oh, a better yes. way to put it sure. on social media. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I laugh. I, I see a lot of it, and I and I laugh because um, you're very unapologetically Bethany. Mm-hmm. Like you are who you are. Like you just yeah. kind of finished saying. So, have you always been like that? And why do you not why? But have you always been that way? And um, is it easy for you to kind of just be 
who you are without regard for how people will perceive you or comment on you because I see the way you respond to people and it's just like like yo right, either yeah, either get with it or like get lost so yeah. um what's that like for you and um how do you continually be vulnerable with who you are yeah. um knowing that there are people who are out there who are going to be extremely judgmental and, and kind of comment yeah those on your are behavior. not my people so <laughs> <laughs> just move on <laughs> so that is a that is one of the thing one of the areas in which my husband and I are not the same we're mm-hmm. not the same person and I I tell him I'll you know I'll try to dial it down or I'll for his sake sometimes but there are times that I just can't mm-hmm. and sometimes I just gotta roll roll it out um I'm just I think I probably have always been that way, and I I don't really have many friends, mm. so that might not be a good thing. <laughs> no, I don't have, I don't, I wouldn't say I have many enemies or many vocal and people that I know dislike me, but I know I know I've got a few. Mm-hmm. I know I have a few, I've, and I've had unfollows and things like that. But really, what is it if you can't speak the things that sure. are important to you, right, yeah. and the things that you know, make you angry or sad or things you're passionate about. Like we cannot all be the same. Mm -hmm. So just be, you know, put it out there. People can choose, you know, they can, I didn't ask you to be my best friend. So, (laughs) (laughs) Uh, but yeah, they call us hurricane and FEMA. I am hurricane. (laughs) He is FEMA. I like that. That's cute. He rolls in and and he he fixes everything. That's good. Takes the care of the that's gets, good. Yes. That is um, precious. I really but I think that plays into, uh, and I don't want to speak for, for everyone who, who admires you, but I know just for me, um, I know you and I don't have a lot of interactions like personally, but I do know the impact you've had on my wife. Mm-hmm. So anyone who is like good to her is automatically in my, in my good graces forever. No. Uh, and, um, but it helps knowing that, I can have a conversation with you here Mm -hmm. and I know you're not going to be a totally different person with what you post on social media. So the authenticity I think, um, helps and, and, and lends credence to who you are, especially when you get into certain modes where you're kind of pouring into other women or Mm -hmm. pouring into people, you know, just in general. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing I really appreciate about you. Um, you know, I, uh, <laughs> I, I can't relate to a lot of the things when, when I, I, I notice you in like a sort of a firestorm, I'm like, whatever, but, <laughs> but I know, but I know, Beth, but I know Bethany is going to be Bethany no matter what the situation is. Sure. And I know you're always being authentic and pure and really just speaking your mind as, as who you are. So that's why I've gained such an appreciation for you because I know how easy it is to put something out on the internet. And everybody just throws their arms up and protest mm-hmm. and you're like, oh, and you delete it or, oh, I'm sorry. Like, I didn't mean um, right. like we kind of see a lot of now in, in, in today's world. Mm. So I think people who are able to be strong in their beliefs and their mm-hmm. faith and in their principles yeah. um, and just kind of, you know, tell people this is who I am. If you don't like it, like nobody's forcing you to be here. I, I really <laughs> can appreciate that. Mm. Um, and I think it's why um, you are as effective as you are um in the roles in which you serve um and and i think it's why people like my wife sort of kind of cling to you because i know there have been situations where she's kind of gone to you for that that wisdom that motherly wisdom or that um you know kind of big sister ish wisdom Mm -hmm. Y'all are um, making me feel old. I'm not going. You're, no, and you're kidding. not. And you're not. No, I'm I, kidding. That's not no. Our yeah, it's so um, it's our experience. I'm like, we'll oh, say, this is the season I'm in. Yeah, that's that's okay. your experience. I can, I, can, I can own it. But I just no. I just I just that's one of the things I probably appreciate. <laughs> Without knowing you too well, that's one of the things um, I appreciate most about you. So um, yeah, keep on. Oh, thanks. Keep on doing what you do. I I I, I get you. Let you say you get a lot of enjoyment out of what we post, but I I promise you. I, I get a lot of enjoyment out of um, what you're posting, like Aww. with the uh, the Fauci masks and, and, <laughs> and things like that. Because I think that's, gifts, I, man. I, I think mean, that's hilarious too. But um, no, I I think that's awesome. So that's all the questions. I did you have? Well, we have a few more minutes. I have few I, minutes I, in this segment. So more, let's more let's of, let's take a break, and okay. then that way we can go without having to worry about okay. stopping without interrupting. Yep. That works. All right, we'll be right back. Uh, so. I know you just kind of finished off uh, Got my singing, segment. singing Bethany's <laughs> praises. So now it's oh, my yeah, yeah, yeah. now it's my turn. Um, I will say, you as just a, just a support 
Mm -hmm. You're amazing. I remember when I was pregnant with Sovereign. It was crazy because he actually had to go to a wedding, and I met up with you. Yeah. You are you were doing something at a Panera, and you said, "Oh, you can come and, and we can chat." And I'm sure you had a lot that you already had to do. And I came, and I think I just like poured my my poor pregnant heart out. I was mm -hmm. like physically, emotionally, mentally miserable. Mm -hmm. And you 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 sat there and you listened, and you just kind of. One, you helped me shift my perspective on pregnancy mm. uh, and being pregnant. I have, at the time, I just was, I've never appreciated pregnancy. <laughs> I, I, I don't like, like when you were saying, you were like, I, I just have a different perspective of pregnancy. And I was like, yeah, me too. Mine's miserable. <laughs> <laughs> but you kind of shifted my perspective. And, you know, even after she was born, you brought us soup that I lived mm. off of for days. I remember um, that soup. And you were the first, one that. of the first people to come visit. And not only did you visit, you brought a gift for solace too. And that touched me because my big thing had always been when a new, when another, I don't like saying mm, new, when another sure. baby comes, I don't want our first to be neglected. I don't right. want her to feel forgotten. And to this day, she still takes that little mermaid every time <sighs> she's taking a bath. She's always in the bathtub with her. She keeps yeah. talking about, well, you know, when am I going to go see my friend and play with the Barbie dream house? And are you going to get me a Barbie dream house? Because Liberty um, has a Barbie right. dream house. So she's, that's still, so I'm like, why do you still remember that? But, um, but you are just, and you may, I'm sure people, you may know this, you may mm -hmm. not, that mm -hmm. a lot of times when you're a good person and you're pouring into other people's lives, sometimes people assume that someone else is telling you all the mm. things you do and all the ways you affect them. So they don't feel the need to. So I think it's very important that, people, especially women, mm. who are examples to other women are aware of that. So if it's mm. something you don't already know, just, I, I, like I said earlier, as a mom, mm. I look up to you because mm. you're a mom of seven and you make it look, you don't make it look easy. I think mm. that that's such a misconception that anyone should make motherhood look easy, but mm -hmm. you make it look doable. Mm. And on top of that, I love watching your individual relationships with your kids mm. uh, because it's not one kid gets more posts on social media yeah. than the other. You you actually make an effort to have individual relationships with mm. each of your kids mm. as well as a family relationship. Mm. I appreciate your relationship with your husband and mm. just seeing you guys. Like recently you went out to, I think it was like a Cajun restaurant. I was like, oh, how's yeah. the food there? Oh, yeah. uh, and I put it on my Yelp list so I can go there. But you, you seem to ha have... I won't say mastered because I think mm. certain aspects of life, it's very difficult to master, but you seem to have done a great job from the outside looking mm. in of managing all the different avenues, which are your life mm. and having us, the outside look in and see like, if she can do this and, mm. and do it well, this is something that I can do. Mm -hmm. So that's something that I, I do appreciate. And if no one has told you, I want to make sure that you know that from me, like Aww. you just being able to reach out to you, reference you for anything, you've always been available. And that's something that I do. I do appreciate. And I'm sure other people in your life appreciate as well. Thanks. So I've got no more questions. I just wanted to pour that into Aww. you. Aw, thank you. I think we all, we struggle uh, often as moms to, you know, we might, we might know, okay, this is a strength, but then we compare mm -hmm. or we say, but am I doing enough? Yes. So it, it's very precious of you to, to say that. Thank you. Yes, you are so welcome. <laughs> that was, actually, you know what? I was thinking, how did you end up moving to Charlotte? That's where my husband grew up. Okay. So he, he's born and raised in Charlotte, and we knew his family dynamic is really tight. Um, great relationship with his parents, who actually live next door to us on Simpson. Oh, do they? So when y'all start walking Simpson, and you, like, check actually. out the Wilkinsons, the ones with the chickens <laughs> on the left, and the little pig, and then so next house up on the left, little horse pasture in between. But great relationship with his parents, siblings. And um, we knew we wanted to raise a family with family yeah with because that's just super rare these mm -hmm. days you know so I we both just decided we want to settle near his family I love my family mm -hmm. too um but his parents won so here we are <laughs> <laughs> now when you moved to Charlotte did you all move I don't want to say your street name but you already did oh okay but I'm sorry yeah <laughs> just stalkers <laughs> no. well, maybe we'll edit that out but did you move straight here or have you lived in other parts of the city um, so we started out in Highland Creek. We oh. had a, yep. We had a subdivision home, which was great. Uh, but it was, you know, a 10th of an acre, just mm -hmm. a little thing. Um, we were pregnant with the second boy 
were hoping to have more and just thought, you know, I don't know that we can fit here for long. Kind of got tired of paying the HOA thing. Yeah. And um, decided maybe we should look for like a fixer upper type of situation. Maybe on an acre, like kind of what's what's out there. And my um, brother in law said the house next to my in laws was empty, and he they didn't know what they were doing with it. So we looked it up on the GIS system, figured out who owned it, called them. Would you be willing to rent while we work on it? Because the lady's stuff was still in the house. Oh wow! They had just moved her into retirement living, um, and it was a project major project, but, uh, we could see the our kids growing up. It didn't even have central air when we moved in. We used a wood stove for heat. So you want to talk about pioneer oh, life? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't even know what to do. Oh, I mean, it was something else, but yeah. So we, we fixed it up and then we added on in the last few years. We, we, yeah. And you've done some, some renovations. You guys have done some beautiful work in there. Yeah. Made it fit the family. Cause we did one and a half bathrooms until Four years ago, so three, three and a half years oh, ago. Oh, wow. One and oh, a half. Wow. People would be waiting in line for the bathroom, so that's just, that's all we knew. So, <laughs> anyway, but now, yeah, we're settled. We're not going anywhere. Oh, I love that. <laughs> that's all, that's all I had. Anything. I was just curious, because you had asked the question about them, um, their humble beginnings, and I was like, okay, that was Virginia, but mm -hmm. how did you get to Charlotte? So now, now we know. Yeah, we were only in Virginia for a year, and then we moved to Charlotte, Highland Creek a year, and then... Was I supposed to even say Howling Creek? It's just where I'm living now. People aren't, aren't supposed to know that. Oh, okay. Right. Okay. That's what you said. Well, I, don't I know mean, the it's, podcast up, it's, up, thing. it's up to you. It's like the stalkers it's, it's more, and knowing where. Yeah, I, mean, I feel like that with the social media thing, like you were saying, yeah, people put it all can out find there. You. People, people. It's not hard to be. Yeah, found. there have been like photos we've posted where I forgot to blur out. The like our, so our house yeah. number, yeah. our house number is just just right there, and right. So but it's so like God protect, <laughs> protect. If yeah. someone really wants stalkers. to find you, they will. Like that's yeah. really what it comes. Somebody want to come come up in here, and you they know they they can take their chances, you know, and right. we'll chips fall where they may, you know. So um, something's gonna go down. <laughs> not really worried about it. I do remember my last question, which I like to ask yeah. all of the moms, oh, uh, because I think that, I think that's a great question to end with. But let me. Are you reading my mind? No, but I know you always you've asked the same question for every guess we've had this month I just said that. okay so i'm not reading your mind i just want to ask a question before you end. you were done asking okay fine um don't steal my question <laughs> <laughs> don't don't try to be um old. i i've mentioned how uh i i see you as someone who other women can look up to obviously mm -hmm. like like my wife um and i, I assume it's safe to say that you you recognize that right yeah, I mean, I yeah. Right. Just without yeah. the word leader. Right. Well, if I say something, it all of a sudden there's a couple more people doing kind of the same thing. It's like, okay, well, then I got to be careful about what I say mm -hmm. or sure. what I suggest. Right. So, so yeah, and, and, and with the whole, um, with, you know, being unapologetically who you are mm -hmm. and, and being bold and, 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 and fearless, um, how important, if it's important to you, mm -hmm. so it may not be important to you, I don't want to speak for you, but mm -hmm. um, how important do you think, you know, women's empowerment is? And, and not, not as like a cheesy, performative, you know, corporate social media thing, but I, when I speak about authenticity, I see you as being sort of like the epitome of women's empowerment because mm -hmm. you live the stuff that you, you preach. You're speaking from experience, not what you saw somebody else say or, or a catchy, right. catchy phrase. Mm -hmm. So... Um, how important is that to you knowing that you have daughters, right? And knowing that you have all these different women who you, who you touch, be it sure. consciously or subconsciously, knowingly or unknowingly, um, how important is that? Um, and do you see it as sort of like service, right? Like just, just serving and, and doing what, what you're supposed to do. Yeah, that's a big one. Cause there's a lot of experience and story behind, um, where I've come with that. Mm -hmm. Um, because growing up in the church, I mean, you, you kind of get this idea of what a godly woman mm -hmm. is, right? And meek and quiet and like s submissive and not that those things are bad, but that's not everyone, mm -hmm. right? We all represent who God is. Sure. God is not just those things, exactly. right? And neither male nor female, might I add. <laughs> um, <laughs> get a little hand clap. <laughs> um, so I guess two things. Um, my mom was more of the, and she may listen to this, so 
Uh, but she was more of the meek and quiet kind of prototype, right? Mm. But I also know she was full of wisdom and discernment and had a lot to bring to the table. Mm -hmm. And her voice was rarely appreciated. Okay. My dad's a great man. I love, I love him. Great father. He, you know, held a ministry together for a long time. Um, but I know she had a lot of gifts and a voice that she wasn't able to fully use. Um, and that's unfortunate. So I, I want to know that, that I, that my voice is always welcome, um, that I do have, you know, eyes to see some things that my husband can't see. He has eyes to see some mm -hmm. things I can't see. Right. Sure. Um, but equal parts and equally, um, welcome voices that are equally welcome at, at any table, anywhere decisions are being made, the whole thing. Uh, and then, you know, so just to kind of know that for myself, know that communities are stronger when all voices are represented, right? And then for my children as well, for my boys to know what a healthy, equal relationship looks like, mm -hmm. um, equal parts in the duties of the home, but also, again, voices uh, being respected. And then boundaries being respected or people taking care of one another. What does that look like? Uh, and then for my daughters as well. So, and then on, on the other side, um, is just working so closely with women and see just through midwifery, taking care of women in, in their, uh, you know, pregnancy, labor, postpartum into those early, you know, all the childbearing years, because it's not just pregnancy. Mm -hmm. So, um, but seeing how much women sacrifice and dads do sacrifice, you know, it's like the don't forget dads hashtag and you're a great dad. <laughs> you really are such a great dad. And I see how much you are actively involved in the lives of your girls and you, you know, put them out there like they are your pride and joy. And, and it seems though, as though, um, you know, there's no, there's no place you'd rather be. And mm -hmm. that's so amazing. Um, but I work closely with women and just see how years go by and they lose themselves. They lose their, you know, just the things that they love, their gifts. Um, and it's okay to put those, at, well, here's a little side story. I have a I have a hen that's sitting on eggs right now. Mm -hmm. One has hatched. She's waiting on two to hatch. This very moment in time, this little season of her life, which is just a couple days for a chicken, but this lasts for years with humans. She's sitting in a little nesting box. She can't even get up to use the bathroom. But typically for that 23 days that they're sitting on eggs, they get up once a day to eat, drink, use the bathroom, get right back on the nest for the other 23 and a half hours of the day. That's how they do oh, mothering, wow. okay? Um, and then their babies hatch, and a few days later they'll get up and they'll teach them how to, you know, get things and get little bugs, and they'll they'll make their little noises, and the little chicks will come over and get whatever they called, whatever she called their attention to. But, it, I mean, it's a beautiful thing to witness, but then you think, wow, you know, humans do this over and over and over again, and sometimes this lasts, like, you know, how many years, <laughs> how long can you sit yeah. without being able to use the bathroom? You know what I'm saying? Not long. <laughs> so you just, for me. My, the thing for me is I, I want women to know what they need for themselves, what they need for their children and advocate for that. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone's needs are different. Everyone's wants are different. And it's okay to lay those things out there. You're not selfish to have ne basic human needs, um, relationship needs or physical needs, emotional needs, you know, all these things. We, we can, for, you know, we're kind of forgotten during mm -hmm. those years. So just to know what your needs are and to be able to advocate for those needs, um, that's important to me. And that, to me, is like, Empowerment starts there yeah. because mm -hmm. once you know what you need, what you want, what you desire, who you are, and how you can bring that to the world, you can do that while raising a family. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an advocate for that. Um, 
but I, I do think that's where it begins. And, and from my perspective, that's what I've seen. That's the season that's just so hard, um, you know, and then rising up out of that. So, yeah. Awesome. That was. Thank you. <laughs> my, um, my last comment, which will lead into a question. Um, you did last summer when, you know, things were peaked and how you were out in the streets and you, you had oh. signs, you were very, you know, you, you were speaking just now on how you advocate for mm. women, but you also, you know, you do use your voice and you advocate for others, other mm. groups. Um, and mm. you know, I did see you protesting, uh, and even inquiring on like, expanding your knowledge when it came to mm -hmm. you know the black lives matter movement and just mm -hmm. things that were coming so i i use that as my guide into you have seven children mm -hmm. that's seven different perspectives mm -hmm. and these are seven individuals who are going to leave your home one day and go into the world mm -hmm. and i don't know if you want to answer this individually per child mm -hmm. or as an overall like by gender but mm -hmm. when your kids are grown and they're living their lives and they're you know doing a podcast or being interviewed mm. by someone else and someone asked them about their mother mm. and her impact on them. Mm. How do you, based on who you are and how mm. you're raising them and how you're pouring into your child, your children, how do you anticipate them as a collective or individually mm -hmm. will respond to that type of question? Mm. I hope that they, I hope that their answer is, that I advocated for myself and I advocated for them, for the, for my dreams and passions and live those things out. Um, and that I advocated for them as well to find their passions and live those things out. Even if it's against the norm or like you said, the voice or just sharing something that's not, um, you know, the typical opinion. It's like, I want to be front and center. Like, I want to be front row, even if it's different. They're all different people, right? And their dreams are not my dreams. Mm -hmm. Like, I would have cows, and I would have all the things and all the gardens, but that would require everyone being on the same page. They do not care about those <laughs> things. So I have to have my little things that I can manage myself that keep me happy, you know, and then also go to the football games and also, you know, help – my third, my second word is, is helping my husband with things. Third is starting to talk about, you know, a YouTube channel, getting him the equipment for that. Fourth wants, you know, he's, she's with tumbling and she wants to be here and there and everywhere. And there's a balance. Not mm -hmm. everybody gets all that they want, but sure. we, we compromise. But being, being an advocate, I hope they say she was my biggest cheerleader. She made sure that we were pursuing our passions with 100%. She was right there, like funding it figuring it out, you know, <laughs> cheering on. Supporting. Yes. Yes. Figuring it out. And you always do. I try. <laughs> y'all have talk, talked to me up and I'm just like, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I, 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 I think you, you, you deserve, you're deserving of all the accolades so for which sweet. you received mm -hmm. and more and more. Yeah. Um, where can people find you on social media? If you want to be found, if you want to be, no. well, do, well, I, do you want to be found on social I media? I guess I so. do because I don't have like these like special names that these people come up with, <laughs> like whatever gray, what something, something they come up with these things that like, you don't want them to know your name. Do you, <laughs> is there something I don't know about? I mean, I don't I, know. I wonder the same thing. Yeah. So yeah, I'm just Bethany Wilkinson on Facebook and then. Bethany dot Wilkinson, so creative, right? Yes. <laughs> dot, on Instagram. It's just that, that finesse, just that chef's kiss. I think there was a Bethany Wilkinson that was already taken. <laughs> yep, so probably. So I just slapped a little dot in there, but that's on Instagram. So, and you can find, you know, like threads of the other things, midwifery, uh, plexus, what my husband does. You know, you'll see hashtags and such and be able to find my people through my social. Does Bobby have a, is, is he have a, he does have his actual own business, right? He's a general what? contractor. He just passed his exam, uh, probably, I mean, a few months ago. He was doing some remodeling before that. Does he have a name or website or it's any of that? It's actually, so we run everything through an LLC called Wilkinson Health and Home. Okay. So Plexus runs through that. Uh, awesome. You know, birth work runs through that. Contracting runs through that as well. So. 
Is there a um, a website for the contracting work uh, or anything? No, Wilkinson Health and Home. We've we've like run a hashtag through social media, and we just started an Instagram page. Okay, so I'll tag. That's about as far as we are. Okay, I just wanted to know if I could tag it if anyone you was. You can. You yeah, can. Okay. Though he says he turns away about eight out of every ten because he's so busy. So busy. Oh and wow. We've okay. Never advertise. It's just. Word of everybody's mouth. doing everybody's doing stuff everywhere mm-hmm. but yeah. I'll call I mean I'll make it <laughs> <laughs> <pitch> y'all in <laughs> I do have some things I want we, yeah we appreciate that yeah so I'll put all that um information down in the description and in the show notes on the on the podcast so we just want to say thank you Bethany for coming yes. hanging out with us on a on a Sunday afternoon also uh Bethany is the first guest to um sit in the new so Rush nice. vibe set up. She's in the she's in the chair of honor. The VIP. Um, Although I'm a little jealous, I did not bring or get a pair of funky socks like oh. the rushing. Oh, I could have given you socks my, because my yeah. game. y'all's Stop. sock game is. We like take so socks very point. seriously in this family. The funny thing about the socks is uh, <laughs> previously before uh, the pandemic hit, I was in a job where I was traveling all the time, and mm. I was I was a corporate trainer, so to speak. Mm. So uh, I had to dress somewhat professionally and this is honestly if i could dress how i'm dressed now every single day i would and i that i do how. so there are many um, days where i say he looks homeless <laughs> <laughs> of course the <laughs> pandemic the pandemic hit i, I come off the road and then that. also i was on paternity leave right um but then i, I changed jobs but I, I didn't go back into an office so i'm like i got all these socks in my drawer that i used to wear all the time i'm like let me just start wearing them so um what, what bethany is referencing is uh usually any morning i can i sit outside and i post a picture of my my coffee mug and my and make yes. sure to get my, my socks and in focus. That's part of your brand. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's so, that's 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 me. Just definitely um, super duper casual. When you guys move into your clothing line, <laughs> socks be, will be a drop down menu. Yes, and I, I just wear socks because uh, my feet are always cold. Yeah, but Jessica's are always mitch ma- Yeah, they're usually not yeah, matching. Are, this is it's a rare occasion that my socks match. Um, but these yeah. are, these say can't stop, won't stop. I think so, or can't stop me. So I figured I had to wear them to match, but. Yeah. Nice. So thank you, Bethany, honestly, for, for doing this. Like I said, you were one of the first people who popped into our minds when we, we knew we were going to start having guests. Um, so we appreciate you making time to, out of your very busy life, um, <laughs> to, to sit down with us and, and, and chop it up for a little bit. All right. And that is a wrap on Mompreneur March. A uh, special shout out to Bethany Wilkinson for just coming in, sitting down, uh, being vulnerable and just kind of telling her story on camera and allowing us to get to know her a little bit better as well as all you who got to got to watch her. So hopefully um, you all got a lot out of it because I know I did and I know Jessica did as well. Um, Marpreneur March has been fun. Uh, it was the first opportunity for Jessica and I to interview people. I don't know that we've ever done it before, let alone together. So it was a first time experience for on, on a lot of bases, having people in our home, having the camera, the production set up. Hopefully you guys like the new uh, setup for the guests. We had our at our chair of, of honor for all of, for our first guests and future guests to, to sit in who who come in and visit us here in Rush Vibes. So it was uh, it was a great month, month of, of, of many firsts. So thanks to Jacynthia Bailey and Melissa Missy Wilson for coming on as well um, and, and just showing us and, and our viewers who the awesome moms that that they are. We have a lot more guests planned to come onto the podcast. Most of them are here local to the city of Charlotte and, and some aren't, but we definitely want to highlight people who are doing really awesome things here in the city. So as I said before, if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe. We're at 49 subscribers here on YouTube. Definitely want to get to 150 would be a nice first step. So if you've been watching us and you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead, take the leap, hit the red button, subscribe so you can be notified anytime we publish a new episode to the channel, which is every Wednesday. So uh, really looking forward to getting 100 subscribers. That would be awesome. Uh, hopefully it doesn't take very much longer because I check these numbers every single day and it drives me crazy. But um, we're grateful for the 49 that we do have. And we appreciate you guys tuning in every single week. Join, uh, excuse me, connect with us on social media. We're on Facebook, Instagram. You can visit us at www.rushvibes.com. Uh, you can also uh, support the channel if you'd like. We're on Cash App, R-U-S-H-D-V-I-B-E-S. So, I'm going to get out of here because I know you guys aren't really here for me anyway. Jessica will be back next week. I promise. Uh, thank you for tuning in this month as well as all the other episodes. We're definitely growing here at Rush Vibes and couldn't do it without, do it without all of our uh, listeners and our viewers. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, for the podcast platforms, go ahead and leave reviews and, and, and ratings, too, because it helps people find us there as well. Um, thanks again. 
We appreciate you guys. Uh, Jess said thank you for listening. She told me to, to, to tell you guys that and that she'll be back next week better than ever. Still in the pandemic, so be safe. Wash your hands. Social distance. And I'm out. Peace.